What does it mean for man to become intentional? That's a great question. And we're going to answer that question today in our conversation entitled Becoming an Intentional Man. Let's go. Well, listen, we're about to have a great conversation um, about one of my favorite topics, manhood and all things masculinity. I am on mission to strengthen, empower, equip men to become more emotionally intelligent, more emotionally responsible, more communicative, and more present in their relationships. And a lot of what uh, a lot of what I share, a lot of what I do, it, it at times sounds harsh, but it's really designed to challenge. Today is going to be one of those conversations where I'm going to challenge men. When I say men, I don't mean you men. I mean us men. I'm a part of this conversation. This is going to, it's going to speak to me just as much as it speaks to you. Now, fellas, I want you to really lean in here. I'm going to share some things with you today that are going to impact how you show up in the earth and will ultimately impact what you receive from the people around you. What I've discovered, man, is that the change that we're looking for as men, in many cases, it starts with us. It starts with how we show up. It starts with how we present. It starts with how we represent. And so I want to give us some information today that is going to shift our paradigm and cause us to become better men. Ladies, this is for you as well. Uh, if you are married, I really want you listening to this so you'll know how to encourage your husband, how to uh, affirm him, even how to pray for him. And if you're not married, I want you to know how to pray for your future husband and what to look for out of a man who's really submitted and surrendered to God and who's tapped in emotionally. Today's topic is becoming an intentional man, becoming an intentional man. I want you to go grab something to write with if you have not already. Uh, grab that notebook, grab that journal, grab that pen. By the way, if you've ever uh, watched the video of mine or if you watch anything of mine in the future, uh, please always come prepared to take notes. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, I'm sharing something that I want you to write down. And so if you click on any video of mine, I just want you to treat it as if it's a master class and I want you coming prepared to take notes. Let's talk right now about becoming an intentional man, becoming an intentional man. Now, I want to start by defining this word intent. I think it's important for us to know when I'm asking you, when I'm asking myself to become intentional, what does it mean to be intentional? What does that word intent mean? Let's look at it. The word intend, intend means to have in mind as a purpose or a goal. To have in mind as a purpose or a goal. To become an intentional man means that you have some things in mind that you have set as a purpose or a goal. To become intentional means that you have some things in mind that you have set aside that you have established, that you have worked through, that you have now called your purpose or a goal. Uh, to intend or to be intentional means to design for a specified use or future. To design for a specified use or, or future, right? So if something is intended to be, it is intended or it is designed for a specified use or future. And the word intend also means to direct the mind. I intended to do that. I directed my mind to do that. Now, as men, we're going to become intentional men because we're going to have a mind um, as a purpose or a goal. We're going to set some goals, even how we show up for the women in our lives. We're going to set some goals. We're going to be more intentional with how we show up for them. It also means to design for a specified use or future. And so as intentional men, we're going to design our words, our thoughts, our deeds, our actions for a specified use or future. In other words, we're gonna stop letting life live us. We're gonna start living life. We're gonna stop letting life do us. We're gonna start doing life. We're gonna become more intentional 
um, with our present and with our future. We're not just going to uh, wake up every day haphazardly, but we're going to set some goals. We're going to set our intentions and we're going to move forward accordingly. And then, guys, we're going to do this third thing. We're going to direct the mind. In other words, you and I are going to stop letting our mind just run free. We're going to stop letting thoughts that are not conducive to our greatness, thoughts that are not conducive to our future, thoughts that are not conducive to our growth, thoughts that are not conducive to our health. We're going to stop letting those things be manifested and fester in our soul and spirit, but we're going to become more directed in our mind, directed in our thinking. By the way, I just want to point, point something out for you. Uh, the word mind, the word soul, and the word heart are synonymous. When you talk about your mind, you're talking about your soul. When you talk about your soul, you're talking about your heart. And so your mind, heart, and soul are synonymous. They are the same thing. So when we're talking about being more directed in our mind, what we're really talking about is being more directed, more intentional, more focused with our soul, more directed, more intentional, and focused with our heart, which means we are no longer living haphazard lives, right? We're not just, we're not just existing but we're here intentionally and we're here on purpose. The word intent, if we look at the Latin word intentus, that word intentus means to stretch out. It means to lean toward, it means to strain. I want you to hear that. When you are intentional, that Latin word is intentus. It means to stretch out. It means to lean toward, it means to strain. So when I'm becoming intentional with my relationship, what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself to be stretched. I want you to hear this. I'm allowing myself to lean toward a particular purpose. I'm allowing myself to strain a little bit. There's an aspect of you, sir, that needs to be stretched in order to become all that God has you to be. Let me put it another way. Um, there are certain types of material that are designed to stretch. Um, if you were to hold the, the pant or the shirt up, uh, just the, the pant or shirt by itself, uh, it doesn't look like much. It won't look like much. Spandex is a prime example. Kind of tight, kind of loose, even kind of small. But the more I fit myself into it, the more it expands. Here's what I need you to hear. As a man, you and I, sir, have to become pliable. We have to become stretchable, even strainable to accommodate the things that are coming into our life. We have to become more uh, pliable, even more stretchable to accommodate things that happen in our relationships. If you are too rigid, if you're too tight, uh, if you if there's no expansion in you, you are going to either hurt them, break them or hurt yourself. And so as men, we have to have a mind that is expandable, stretchable, even strainable. It even says here that to be intentional to in the intent, that word intent means to lean toward, which means we don't we focus our attention. Let me give you a prime example. Um, there are so many men, even men who are watching this today, who when the women in your life, whether it's your mother, your sister, your daughter, your wife, your girlfriend, fiance, even a friend, when she is having an emotionally expressive moment, when she's crying, uh, saddened, when she have a, has a long face, what we tend to do is lean out. We tend to fall back. We tend to move away from it because we don't want the emotional cooties to jump off on us. We don't want to deal with those things that have to do with the emotions and deal with the heart. That's why men ghost in relationships. Uh, many of them don't want to deal with the pain and the suffering and the tears of breaking up. And so they would just skirt out without uh, making that very clear that it's over, primarily because we tend to lean out when it comes to the, the matters of the heart or emotions. But what I'm finding here is to be intentional means to lean toward. I want you to hear this. So when your wife, your girl, your daughter, your sister, your mother, your friend is having an emotionally expressive moment uh, when she is not where she could be, when she is having a challenge, instead of leaning out as men, what I want us to do is to become intentional by leaning toward them. Don't run from their emotions, run to them. And what that does is now it stretches us, it expands us, it expands our capacity. Now, uh, as you're taking notes, I want you to write down these five areas of intent. 
and we're going to land here. I'm going to share these five things and we're going to get out of here today. Five areas of intent, five areas of intent. Here's the first thing, fellas, that I really want us to become more intentional about focusing on. Number one, our speaking. I want us to be more intentional about our speaking. Let's look at Psalm chapter 141, verse three. Look what it says. It says, set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Wow. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord, and keep a watch over the door of my lips. That's Psalm 141, verse three. And I want you and I to have that same mindset, even the same prayer, like, God, I want you to put a guard over my mouth. Help me to watch my lips. Help me to control what I say. Because as a king and as a leader, whenever I speak, I am establishing a decree. Fellas, I need you to hear this. When you speak, when I speak, whenever we speak, we are establishing decrees. And so you have to be careful. You have to be mindful of what you talk about. And so we hear, we hear, we, we hear David asking God, God, put a guard over my mouth. Lord, keep, keep a watch over the door of my lips. Here's why our words were designed to retrieve a result. They were. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear that and really let that sink in. Your words, sir, your words, ma'am, are designed to retrieve a result. Whenever you speak a word, you are sending those words into the atmosphere to retrieve that result. So when you say things like, I'm sick as a dog, you're giving those words permission to make you sick like a dog would be. When you say my feet are killing me, you're giving those words permission to cause your feet to be your demise. And so this job makes me sick, right? When you say this job makes me sick, what you are telling those words to do is every time you go to work to cause sickness of some sort, uh, some sort to happen. And so we have to be mindful to watch over our words because our words design our world. Our words retrieve the results that we send them out to do. You create with your words. How do we know this? Well, we're made in the image and likeness of God. And everything he said, he first, uh, he, everything he saw, he first said. Everything he said, he eventually saw. So too are we as men. When we speak, we have to be careful because we, we, we're going to see what we say. So you and I have to be intentional with number one. We've got to be intentional with our words. Here's number two. I want you to write this down. Not only do we have to be intentional with our words, I'm sharing five areas of intent that I want us men to focus on. Number two, I want you to write it down. We have to be intentional with our thinking, with our thinking, All right? Finally, Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. He's giving us eight things that he wants us to really use to shift our paradigm, to shift our thinking. Eight things. He said, brothers, whatever is noble, if it's noble, think about that. Whatever is right. He said, if it's right, that's what I want you to focus your attention on. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if it is excellent or if it's praiseworthy, he said, that's where I want you to land your thoughts. So if your thinking does not fit into this description of thinking, we have to be very careful to cast those thoughts down. He said, think about such things. We have to stop allowing our thoughts to control us. What we have to do as men is take control of our thoughts. We must drive our thoughts and not let our thoughts drive us. And the way that we drive our thoughts, I want you to hear this. The way that you, the way that I drive my thoughts, instead of letting my thoughts drive me, instead of letting your thoughts drive you, is we focus our attention on our meditations. Whatever you are meditating on, you will manifest. Let me put it another way. Whatever is in you is coming out of you. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever is in you is coming out of you. And so I have to change what's in me if I want to change what comes out of me. 
Now, when I say what comes out of me, I don't just mean out of your mouth. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean out of your life, out of your habits, out of your intentions. I change my meditations. And when I change my meditations, I change my results. What are you meditating on? What I've discovered about myself, if I can just be quite frank with you and transparent, uh, is that when I'm, I, I'm a hip hop head, born and raised on hip hop, I'm 47 years old. So I was essentially there at the birth of hip hop. Uh, and so I've been listening to hip hop music my entire life. Uh, I still listen to it to today. But what I've discovered is I have to turn it down some, and I don't mean in volume. I mean, I, I can't listen to it as much, primarily because I notice that my attitude changes, even my language changes when I listen to a lot of music um, that is not edifying. Um, when I watch, uh, I watch, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch a lot of YouTube, and so when I'm when I'm doing these things, if if, if these things aren't really edifying to me. I can always tell when I'm doing too much or listening to too many things that are not edifying because they start coming out of me, out of my life, out of my words, out of my actions, out of my thinking. Uh, and I suspect that you are the same. And so if we're going to change the results we're receiving in the earth. We have to change what we are meditating. We have to change what we are consuming. And the way that we, when we change what we meditate, when we change what we're consuming, we'll change what we're thinking and ultimately change what we're speaking and saying, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is abundant in your heart is what your mouth will speak. And so if you want to change what comes out of your mouth, by the way, what comes out of your mouth, remember we just identified, it changes my world. What I'm saying is what I'll be seeing. What I'm saying is what I'm thinking. So if I change my thinking, I change my speaking, I change my speaking, I change my vision. Let me give that to you again. When I change my thinking, when I change what I meditate, I'll change what I'm saying. But when I change what I'm saying, I'll change what I'm seeing because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, you shall have whatsoever you say. So whatever you're saying is what you're going to be having, what you're going to be seeing, what you're going to be experiencing. And so I've got to do number two, I've got to change my thinking. I've got to be intentional about my thinking. Um, once I change my thinking, I can change my speaking. When I change my speaking, it's, it's all cyclical. All right, so I have to change my thinking. Again, Paul said, whatever is noble, whatever's true, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Paul says, man, think on that. Think on that. I want you to focus on that. So Kings, as you're listening to me, I want you to hear this, man. We have to really be intentional about what we're thinking. By the way, I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, don't believe everything you think. You cannot believe everything you think. All right. I'm sharing five areas of intent. Area number one, I really want you to focus on being intentional with your speaking. I'm going to do the same. Number two, I want you to really lean into becoming intentional about your thinking. I need to do the same. I do. Here's number three. I want you to write this down. Um, well, let me read this scripture first for first Corinthians 13 11 it says this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child it goes on to say when I became a man, put the ways of childhood behind me. Here's a third thing I want you to become very intentional about. I want you to become intentional with your reasoning, with your reasoning, how you process. Now, we cannot afford or we, we can't afford to let our, our speaking, our thinking and our reasoning uh, just roam free. We've got to reel that stuff in. Reasoning is how you process your thoughts. You want to know what reasoning is. It's really just how you process your thoughts. So when we reason, we, we, we reason with one another. I'm listening to you and I'm reasoning with what you're saying. You're listening to me as we speak and you're reasoning. You're asking yourself, does this make sense? Is what he's saying true? Will this change my life? You are reasoning. And so we're reasoning together. I've got to be intentional with my reasoning. And what that means is now I have to be intentional about what I allow myself to think and what results I allow to come as a result of my thinking. 
Got to be intentional with my reasoning. When I'm having a disagreement with someone, there is a way that I used to do things, but now I'm going to change my reasoning. I'm going to listen a little bit closely. I'm going to be more attentive. I'm going to be more intentional, more mindful, more present, more responsive, more communicative when I'm reasoning. Three, three areas that we've covered so far. If we're going to be intentional, we have to be intentional with our speaking. Number two, we have to be intentional with our thinking. And number three, we have to be intentional with our reasoning. How do we become more intentional with our reasoning? Well, Bible says it this way, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We have to let the mind of Christ abide in us. How does he do that? He does that in our soul. He does that in our spirit, man. And so we have to really invite him. God, think thoughts through my mind. Think with my mind. Speak with my mouth see with my eyes, giving him full access to who we are is how we become intentional. I want to give you number four. We're almost done. Number four is we're going to become intentional with our planning, with our planning. I'm sharing five areas where we as men uh, should become more intentional. Um, number four is with our planning. Luke 14, 38 says this, for who, for which of you, Desiring to, be, desiring to build a tower, does not first do this thing, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. It goes on to say that the guy who doesn't count the cost will be laughed at. He'll be, he'll be made fun of. And so we have to make sure that we're counting the cost. We have to be intentional with our planning. We cannot afford to be haphazard in our actions and especially with our plans. It is paramount that we count the cost, weigh the odds, do the math on decisions that we're going to make in the future. You have to be intentional with your planning. In other words, you have to really sit down and think through, who am I now? Who do I need to become? Where am I now? Where do I want to go? And how do I get to where I need to go? How do I become the person I need to be? What are the steps? We're becoming intentional with our planning intentional with our planning. I'm sharing with you five areas where you and I as men can become more intentional. By the way, if you're a lady listening to this, this applies to you as well. Uh, but I really want my men to lean in here uh, because this is an area that I think we're, we're missing the mark in, in many in many cases. And so we have to just level up and become more intentional. Here's number five. This is the last one and then I'm gonna get out of your way. We're gonna become intentional with our serving with our serving. Mark 10, 43 says this, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. That's Mark chapter 10, verse 43. This is actually one of my life scriptures. Mark 10, 43, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your, look what he's saying here. He's saying now the, the, the key to greatness, um, the key to elevation, the key to promotion is not in your title. It's not in your tax bracket. It's not in how much free time you have, but the key to greatness is in how you serve. You are not a great man if you are not a great servant, period. You can have a great title. You can, you can have a great position. You can even make great money. But if you are not a great servant, you are not a servant leader. You're not a leader. Okay. There is no, I'm sorry. If you're not a great servant, uh, you're not, you're not leading greatly. You can lead, but you're not leading greatly because here it says there is no greatness where there is no servitude. Let me read it again. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. So the way up is down. I want you to hear that. The way up is down. So the way we become great men, great husbands, great fathers, great entrepreneurs, great employers, great employees, great ministry gifts, whatever it is that you do, the way you become great is you adopt a servant's mindset. You do not become great without serving. Great men are great servants. Hmm. Weak men, mediocre minded men are selfish men. And so we're not, we're not selfish. We're great because we serve great. 
We're great because we because we show up every day seeking opportunities to build, grow, and serve other people. Let's recap these five areas of intent. Area number one, speaking. You and I need to become more intentional. Remember that word intent means to have in mind as a purpose or a goal. It means to design for a specified use or future. It means to direct the mind. In other words, I'm going to really focus on, I'm going to lock in on, I'm going to pay attention to my words, even over the next 30 days. I, I, you may need to even write a conversation journal or conversation log, but you want to become more intentional with your speaking. Number two, you want to become intentional with your thinking, right? You want to become intentional. Remember that word intentus, Latin word means to stretch, means to lean toward. And so we want to be stretched in our thinking. We want to be stretched in our speaking. We want to lean toward a focused goal. Number three, we want to be stretched, expanded, in our number three reasoning how we reason together it's going to be important for us to learn how to become intentional with our reasoning and then number four with our planning you and i have to really learn how to plan well how to how to how to really how to sit down and really tap into our vision we have to plan according to vision we have to plan according to the pattern that is shown by us through god's vision in our hearts and then number five We're going to become intentional about serving well. We're going to become intentional about serving well. Well, listen, I hope this really challenged you. I hope it helped you. I hope that you gained some things today that you can apply to your life. What I suspect and what I submit to you is that if you apply what you're learning today, just these five things, you are going to start seeing immediate results in your life and in the life of those who are connected to you, in the life of those who do life with you, because you're going to be a different person when you become more intentional. Now, I want to give you two opportunities to to walk a little close, a little more closely with me. Uh, first things first, if you are not already subscribed to, listening to, tuned into my podcast, The Permissions Podcast, it's on Apple iTunes, Spotify, uh, it's on most large streaming platforms, please go check out the Permissions Podcast. It'll absolutely bless your life. Uh, It's going to, again, shift those paradigms. Uh, Also, if you would like to walk a little more closely with me, I have a community that I have launched. Uh, Three years ago, I launched a community called the Activate Nation. It's really a coaching and mentorship program for people who really want to get relationships right. Um, We have single men and women, married men and women, young, old, black, white, all colors, creeds from all parts of the world. Uh, We connect on uh, a weekly basis. I pour into them much like this, uh, but in more depth, more detail. Um, And it's just amazing. It's all virtual. Um, Activate Nation has been really been a blessing. If you join this community, you have access to all types of classes, courses, hundreds of hours of training, um, community, our private Facebook group is just so much. Um, And so I want you to check us out, www.theactivatenation.com, www.theactivatenation.com. Come see what we're doing. Check out the podcast. Come check out Activate Nation and everything else. uh, If you don't do anything else, I want you to consider this. Always give yourself permission to think differently. Think thoughts that scare you. Think thoughts that frighten you. That's how we get to the version of ourselves that we want to be. All right. Again, I hope this was helpful. Please share this with a friend. Don't forget to don't forget to hit that like. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll know when we're going live. Finally, I want you to hit the comments and let me know which of these five things spoke loudest to you. All right. Until next time. Take care.